I chose Karu Ashavak because I fell in love with his work before I knew anything about him, before I knew anything about Inuit art. And the thing that I love most beyond his use of material is the sense of humor he has. It is this sense of play, it's a sense of imagination, and it feels so contemporary. It feels like it was made yesterday. There's a timelessness to how he looks at the world. Hi, my name's Wanda Nanabush. I'm Anishinaabe Kwe from Bosley First Nation. Currently, I am the curator of Indigenous art at the Art Gallery of Ontario here in Toronto. I was in Sydney, Australia when the pandemic was called and uh, the Art Gallery of Ontario was shut down. So when I arrived, I literally went from the airport straight to my house and into quarantine for two weeks. I am going to talk to you about uh, an exhibition that I am sad that we can't see right now because the AGO is closed. And that is the Karu Ashavak exhibition. The work is really compelling. It's all in whites and grays and browns of fossilized whale bone. That was his preferred medium. And it's a medium that is quite fragile and very sensitive. And he generally created most of his sculptures working with the material in its own pathways. He didn't force it to do what he wanted wanted it to do, he kind of made his ideas work with the material, with every shape and form. The photo that you're looking at of Kiru Ashavak does show how he obviously was a really fun-loving, kind person. His sister said that when he was younger, they used to be told stories around the fire or at bedtime, and he, he used to be petrified of the monsters and the creatures and these stories. And then as he got older and he started carving, they became much more loving and, and funny to him. So they all come kind of out of in, inspired by these stories he heard as a kid, but also by his experiences working with a shaman. The first work you're looking at is Mother with a Pulled Tooth. And this is exemplary of his sense of humor. You see the, the mother, <laughs> she's, she looks shocked because she's just kind of harmed her child for its own good. And then from her finger, you see there is um, some sinew and hanging off of it is a little tooth. And on her back in her amauti is her baby who's like screaming in, in, <laughs> in pain with his head thrown back and his face is, is quite grotesque looking. And this is kind of an everyday occurrence in, in community. I remember this as a kid, although my parents would use the door and just slam the door and out comes the tooth. So I think these are experiences many of us can relate to. The next work that you're looking at is Shaman with Spirit Helper. And this is a really interesting piece and shows uh, how he had no limits in terms of what a sculpture should look like, what it should be about. He really didn't place any limitations on his imagination. And the beauty of it is the string that's coming out of the shaman's mouth. And that's the spirit helper hanging there. In Inuit culture, shamans are considered to be like the communicators between the earthly world and the spiritual world and also healers of a sort. And in this work, you can also feel those portals. So like the mouth is a form of a kind of portal between the spirit and the earth, between the inside and the outside. And this tiny little spirit helper, it just, it makes you happy to look at it. The idea that the world, the spiritual world is a scary one or one you might wanna, you know, stay away from, uh, isn't present in his work. It's actually, he makes it so inviting. Mm -hmm.